Question three, a town can be considered as a rectangle which runs 10 kilometers east to west and eight kilometers north to south. So I've got this east to west 10 and eight north to south. So it's within this purple rectangle. A coordinate grid is placed on a map of the town with the original, with the origin in the southwest corner. That's down here. There are four schools in the town, A, B, C, and D, whose coordinates are this. So I've put them in A, B, C, and D. Children go to the school that is closest to their home when measured in a direct line, and the state agent wishes to construct a diagram that shows in which school's catchment area a house lies. Find the perpendicular uh, bisector of AB. So the first thing we have to find is this one here, the perpendicular bisector. We'll find the equation of that line, the green line there. Well, the first step, as we've done before, is to find the midpoint between A and B, and that's five on two and four. Remember, that's just the average, so we take the X value and the X value, and we add them together and divide by two, and we do the same with the Y values. Okay, we add them together and divide by two, and we've got the midpoint. Now the gradient of the line AB or the sector AB is going to be just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I've used the A and B points to get that and I've got minus 2 which you would expect because it's got a negative slope. The perpendicular bisector gradient is the opposite sign and the inverse, so that's 1 on 2. And then we, as we did before, we put the we use the midpoint because we know that's on the perpendicular bisector, and we also use the slope of the perpendicular, or the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is a half. So we've got y minus four, y minus y one, equals a half times x minus x one, and we've got y equals a half x plus eleven on four. B, show the positions of A and B and their perpendicular bisector on a diagram of the town. Well, we've already put those in, so it's the positions of A and B. And that's the position of the perpendicular bisector. The perpendicular bisectors of A and C and B and C, so they've told us what the others are. I've drawn them in here. The BC one is this one. It's got a negative slope. And the other one they wanted us to see was the AC, the one between there and there, and that's this one. Construct the Voronoi diagram using the incremental algorithm for the three schools A, B, and C. I don't think I'm doing that. I'm just looking at it and just you know, use a bit of common sense. So this B here, this region here, we're trying to work out where is B. Well, everything on this side of the line is B, okay? And, but we've got to be careful because we're, remember, we're ignoring D at the moment. So D is not there, we're ignoring D. We're just looking at A, B, and C. Because that's what it says, right? A, B, and C. So ignore D, we're just using these three perpendicular bisectors. So everything on this side is going to be B but only up to this line, because this line is dividing between C and B. Everything to the left of this line, or this side, is going to be B. So we can fill in along here and down that line there, and that's all B. A is everything above the line here, so that's there. And the line that divides A and C is this line, so it's all the way up to here. And that's why it's gone over that line, and it's to here. C is everything to the right of this line. Okay, and also to the right of this line. So it kind of meets there, so it's up there, and that's shown here. D, one, find the perpendicular bisectors of B, B, D, and C, D. Okay, now I've got B, D, and C, D. B, D, and C, D, the perpendicular bisectors of those, and these are the blue lines I've put in here. That's a perpendicular bisector for C, D. It's just a horizontal line, and the one between B and D is this line here, and show these on the diagram. So there you go. Okay, this is the calculations here for the equations of the two perpendicular bisectors, BD and CD. So BD is this one, we expect a positive slope, and CD, well that's just going to be a horizontal line, so it should have a slope of zero, right? There. Well, we find the midpoint, and I found that point there. Again, we just average the two points, add the x-coordinate of this and the x-coordinate of that, and divide by two, and the same with the y-coordinates, and divide by two, and we've got 11 on two and two. That's five and a half and two. That's that point. CD, well, we're looking for eight and seven on two. Okay, that line there, again, we just add the X values together and divide by two. And so it's eight plus eight divided by two is eight. And for the Y's, it's, Y's it's the same. We add the Y values up for C, Y value of C and the Y value of D and divide by two, and we've got 3.5, which is uh, seven on two here. So we've got the midpoints. Okay, like before, once you get the midpoints, we find the gradients. The first one is between B and D. We want the gradient of that line there. It's going to be negative. So it's just Y2 minus Y1 on X2 minus X1. 
and we got minus 2 on 5, we expected a negative number. And for CD, if we want the gradient of that line, that's undefined, straight up, so that's undefined. The perpendicular bisector gradients, now this will be the blue line here between B and D, so the perpendicular bisector of the sector BD, and that's going to be the inverse and the opposite sign, so if it's minus 2 on 5 between B and D, then the perpendicular bisector is going to be just 5 on 2. Okay, for this one here, CD, uh, the, we, define, we said that was undefined, that gradient, so the perpendicular bisector will be the horizontal line, which is, has a gradient of 0. So we've got zero for that. Now to find out what the equations are, the perpendicular bisector of BD, well, we're going to use the midpoint, which is 11 on 2 and 2, and we're going to use the gradient of 5 on 2 and put it into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and you get this equation for BD, the perpendicular bisector, so that will be that one. We're expecting a positive slope, and it's positive. And now we want to find this line here. Well, this line is just going to be y equals 3.5 or 7 on 2. You can use the formula, y minus y1 equals 0 times x minus x1. So y minus 7 on 2 equals 0, y equals 7 on 2. Complete the diagram required by the estate agent. And by I, you can see that the A hasn't changed. The B is going to change because we've now got this line here between B and D. So this area here is now moved into the D area because this other line, the perpendicular bisector, is going up like that. So I've recolored that. C is also losing some area because it used to own this area here, which was closer to C, but now it's closer to D. And that's going to be uh, distributed there because of this perpendicular bisector that goes between C and D. And that's that line right there. And so that all becomes the D area. And the C area is shrunk. And the B's lost a little bit too. Okay, so there you go. Okay, now we're looking at E. Find the coordinates of the two vertices where three edges meet. So we've got one is 5 and 11 on 2. 5 and 11 on 2 is that point there, 5 and a half, right? So 5 and 5 and a half there. And the other is 6 and 7 on 2. It's 6 and 7 on 2 is 3 and a half right here. All right, so we've got those. F, a fifth school is to be built in the town as far as possible from the other schools. Give the coordinates the point at which it should be built if it was to meet this requirement. Well, the solution will be at whichever of the vertices is furthest from the three sites nearest to them. Okay, so this point here, that point that we chose there, which was this 5 and 11 on 2, that one, we're going to see what the distance is between A, C and B. And this other one here, which was 6 and 7 on 2, this one we're going to see between C, B and D and see which one is furthest from the sites. So for the first one, Oh, by the way, it says only one length for each needs to be checked as each of the other two points will be equal distance from the vertex. So what they're saying is if we choose this point here, we really only have to check A. We could just check C or we could just check B, but we only have to check one of them. I've chosen uh, site A, so I'm going to look at the distance from there to there, which is going to be the same as from there to there and the same to there. Anyway, we're going to use the distance formula. So I'm using site A, which is 2, 5 and this 5 and 11 on 2. I use the distance formula, y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared, or square rooted, and I get 3.04 kilometers. And the other one I'm going to check is this other one here, which is 6 and 7 on 2, which is that point here. Okay, I'm going to check that point. Well, I've already written E there, but I'm going to check that point, so you kind of can jump ahead a little bit here. So I'm going to check that point and see how far it is from C, D, and B. And I've chosen site D, so I'm going to check that one, that distance, because it should be the same as that distance and that distance. Okay, so I'm going to use a distance formula, and I'm going to use those two points, and I've got 3.20 kilometres. So one is 3.04 and the other is 3.20, and it says the solution will be at whichever of the vertices is furthest from the three sites nearest to them. And so that means this point here, this one here, is furthest from the three points surrounding it, so that means the fifth school should be built at 6 and 7 on 2. Now, I don't have the, uh, the answers from the back of the book for this one, so we might have to change it later, but we'll go with that. Then it says, on a diagram already drawn, add the fifth school at the position found in part F and sketch the new Voronoi diagram. There is no need to find equations for the new perpendicular bisectors. Well, I've put it here. We said it was going to be there. Then I had to recolor it. Okay, So I've recolored it. If you can see that 
By putting that there, we've now split up between D and E. So everything on above that line is going to be an E. Similarly over here, so I've put in a lot more lines. I have to put in more lines and draw this up, and it looks okay, I think. That's the perpendicular bisector for B and E. This one's a perpendicular bisector for A and E. That's why that line is there. This is B and A, so try to make sense of that. Okay, that's great.